Okay, today we're going to be looking at waveguide antennas, or as more commonly known on the internet as a cantenna. That's because normally people make them out of tin cans, old coffee cans, soup cans. Um, in fact, any, any kind of can you can get your hold on. That's about the right size and length. Now, there is a lot of mathematics involved when making a waveguide antenna. There are some good calculators on the internet that you can enter your circumference of your can in and they'll enter your can and it will throw out the dimensions that you need, where to cut your hole for your driven element, etc. How long your driven element needs to be. But to find the right tin can is quite difficult. This one is actually a good choice, but unfortunately it's just a little bit too short. So the waveguide compared to the driven element is off. So although it will work, it will not work as good as what it should. This one is just too short and too big. But we will be using this one in a later segment. I'll show you why. This one is just too small. Okay. So I have actually been looking around to um, find something I can make the perfect cantenna out of without having to go to a manufacturer and having uh, a cylinder manufactured uh, which would cost a lot of money and the thing I found to make the perfect antenna is stainless steel toilet brush now we'll get rid of that because we don't want it this one I actually pay five pounds for and it has a perfect circumference and it's a perfect length and it is actually quite easy to make a cantenna, but it is also quite easy to get it wrong. Like I say, you've got to be spot on with your measurements. And what we're going to do, I'm going to get down on the bench, I'm going to bring the camera in, and I'm going to show you how to make a cantenna out of a toilet brush. Okay, what we've got in the vise is a BNC connector, and you actually want the one with the metal threads. This is one with plastic threads, it's a, an insulated BNC connector. Um, we don't actually want to use this one for this, but we are going to be using that one in a later segment. Right, so what I like to use in cantennas is 22 gauge copper wire. I think it's 22 or I have 20. It's quite a thick one. And it is actually too big to actually fit in that solder cup, I don't know if you can see there. So what I've done, I've actually filed down a nice solder point, and filed it down to a point so it'll actually fit in there quite nicely. So what we're going to do, we're going to fill up this solder cup and then solder this onto here. Feeding a liberal amount of solder into the solder cup. Okay. To be very careful with these BNC connectors because this insulation here, it's a plastic. I'm not quite sure what plastic it is, but it does not like heat. Too much heat and it will start to melt and then your BNC connector is ruined. So, what we're going to do, I'm going to try and get it on film is I'm going to heat up the solder cup Right, one thing you will notice about this is it actually has a nut that goes on and attaches, so you will have this amount sticking out of your cantana. Now, according to the calculations that I entered for this particular can, this driven element wants to be 31.69 millimetres. I am actually using 
using a pair of digital calipers. You can also use a ruler. Okay, and you want to try and get it as near to that measurement as you can. Okay, so you have to take into consideration that this much will be sticking up into your can. So you want to be measuring it back here. So get my calipers there and roughly take into account the thickness of the can itself. So I actually want to be cutting it off round about there. Okay. So as you can see, that's our driven element now measured off. Now what I'm going to do is just tidy up that solder a little bit. I have pre-drilled a hole in the can because I'm sure you didn't want to watch me drilling holes. Now I have gone a little bit screw with because I want to file down the actual um, rough bits of metal around there. I didn't want them sticking up inside the can, so to speak. I see a good shot on that. Okay. So by the time I put the washer on this. bit fiddly. Go. Hopefully you can see that the driven element inside the cam. Again, make sure your measurement for your hole is as accurate as you can possibly get it, and you're measuring the actual centre of the diameter of your drill hole. Okay, because the distance from your driven element to your back reflector is crucial. Now here I've also taken the, taken it to one side and drilling these two holes here and what that is actually going to do is get this little bracket and I'm going to actually use this bracket to mount it on a tripod. Now what you don't want to do is fix the bracket with metal screws because any metal that is inside the cantenna will interfere with the signal. So I've got these little plastic screws, they've got a low profile, and plastic will not interfere with any wireless signal whatsoever. Again, I'll put links in the show notes where I got these from. I got them from Rapid, I'll put the number up and everything. And 
the order number. So what I'm going to do now is just screw these from the inside. Find the hole. Really difficult to do with some film. So, when I was drilling the holes, I actually uh, decided to spray a matte black. Now, this one here, I'm actually going to make this one as well, and I'm going to actually leave this one stainless steel. Okay. I would try not to get any paint inside the tin itself. I want to leave that nice and shiny and smooth. Not that paint will affect the um, radio waves at all, um, the signal it's picking up, but it just looks a lot neater. Okay, here's the uh, waveguide antenna, it's actually finished, mounted it to a tripod. Okay, and remember I used plastic bolts, nuts and bolts, to fix this bracket in, as that won't affect the uh, radio waves at all, it'll go straight through plastic. Now, one last thing I want to do to finish this off is I want to cover this end. Now, ideally it wants to be some sort of plastic so it doesn't affect the uh, radio waves at all. And what I've got is actually found a roll of this vinyl in a cheap shop. And what you can do is place like that just to make sure it's all stuck to the edge and then get a sharp craft knife and slowly screw around the can So, what we'll do now, connect this up to the alpha card, fire up the laptop, see what kind of signal game we can get. Okay, so here we're going to test the cantenna um, alongside the stock rubber duck that comes with the alpha card. At the minute I've got the stock rubber duck on and we're picking up a few access points. Um, I'll have to check the website, but I think the stock rubber duck on the Alpha kicks out around 4 decibel gain. I think that's what they advertise, but I'll have to check. So here we've got a few access points like you can see. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch out the rubber duck and connect up the antenna and see what kind of performance gain we actually get. Just give it a minute to settle. Right, already you can see way more access points. Way more. Now, when I'm building my antennas to test them, um, see how good they are, I like to use this access point here, our ladies. Now, I do know that's a school, and it's about a quarter of a mile away. And you can see here we're getting minus 63, 64 decibel gain loss, which is pretty good pretty good you see how packed 2.4 gigahertz spectrum is loads of access points let's see if there's any open ones nope. 
people are getting pretty good now there you go talk talk open Arts Computer Corporation well, I wouldn't have thought they'd have made it open these ones here are uh, BT ones so there we go I think you can see definitely definitely um, worthwhile making and um, just make sure your measurements are as good as you can possibly get them with a ruler if not buy a pair of digital calipers they're well worth it I think I got mine for around five pound on eBay so definitely worth a build and uh, I hope you got something out of this